Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Research Tips and Advice and today we're going to be talking about how to prepare for a PhD interview, some top tips, pieces of advice and some common mistakes I have found people make during a PhD interview. Hey guys, if you're new to the channel, my name is Amir Hussain. I am a researcher at the University of Leicester. I love to talk about research so much so I decided to make YouTube videos sharing tips and advice for the research life. So if you're interested in keeping up, do think about subscribing as you can see down below. Click that post notification bell so you don't miss out on videos like this and potential vlogs that I'm hoping to be doing outdoors so you can join me in them as well. But without further ado, let's get back to the video at hand. So you might be one of those who have been looking to do a PhD, you've maybe submitted some applications and you've probably got some responses to potentially do an interview to see if you can get awarded that PhD position and if you're one of them, and this video is definitely for you. I'll be sharing some interesting tips on how to approach that dynamic of being in interview. Now, many of you will probably know about the general interview tips about you know how to be yourself, how to you know make sure you're sitting properly. So that's quite obvious and easy to find. But what I'm going to be talking about is in particular for PhD interview, what things you need to keep in mind in terms of being more aware and more better best prepared for what the supervisor, what the academic might ask you and how you can best respond to those type of questions. So the top tips for PhD related interviews is there has to be a balance between being enthusiastic and being passionate about research in general, but having the humility and the gratitude to know that you are looking forward to learning whilst you do a PhD, not just say that, right, I am the best candidate, I'm going to sit here, I know everything about research, I should be awarded a PhD. No, there has to be a balance between that passion and that desire, that fire to look at doing research, that you want to you know, develop your research skills, you want to do a PhD because of those reasons, but you're grateful because it's a great learning curve. You are, you're humbling yourself to say that. It'll be an honor to be amongst a team. It'll be an honor to be at the university. It'll be an honor to develop my skills in this area. And that's what a lot of supervisors, a lot of academics are looking for. They're not looking for a person who has number of qualifications because any research can be taught how to do experiments how to you know prepare for interview for participants can be taught but what is really hard to teach is the passion the desire the mannerisms the etica of being a great researcher that is something that can be instilled in person especially in interview with your body language how you're coming across so the top tips is to be is to show your passion use your body language show your desire you have to be passionate about research and that's one of the biggest mistakes many a lot of people make i'll come to that later but it's a notion of focusing on i have this qualification i got this i did this but there isn't much research passion coming out of you and that's what supervisor academics are looking for the qualification that were on your cv and application that's what got you to the interview so now they interview they don't want to talk about your qualification much they want to talk about why do you want to do your phd what makes you a great candidate? These type of questions. And I will put a link to a PDF, hopefully, that I can try and make to give you some advice about research, advice in terms of the interview stage. But keep in mind about top tips that on one side, people don't show enough passion. The other side is where they show maybe too much arrogance, perhaps, about wanting that they are the best candidate, I'm better than this person, or I have this to offer, I have this to offer. It's a bit different to a standard job interview because you're... You're not supposed to be the expert in the research. You're not supposed to be, you might be the best candidate. You're not supposed to be overly gloating about it because a PhD is a learning curve and you're there to say, I have this research you know, experience, but I would love the opportunity to learn it and do a PhD. I'm very grateful for PhD positions because of X, Y, and Z. I'm very grateful to be at this university. So keep in mind that all those kind of top tips in terms of when you're sitting in an interview, those who think that should be in your head all the time. Showing passion by showing that I'm grateful for the position. Now in terms of crash course advice, definitely, definitely research university, research the area of what you're going to be doing a PhD in, but also research the academic and the research group they're in. Look at the recent papers they have published and make sure you browse around them. You don't have to be an expert in that area because that's what you're doing a PhD for, but to show them that you did your homework. Why? Because it's related to that top tip before of showing your passion and showing that you are passionate about doing research. That's what you definitely, definitely need to do in terms of top tip advice. Do your homework about all of those angles that I mentioned. 
And when it comes to, you know, looking into that, the biggest thing you don't want to be is when they ask you about university, why did you choose university? And you said, oh, because it was on the uh, jobs.ac.uk. And that's where a lot of PhD candidates falter because they didn't do their homework. So you can get advice about how to be good in interview. That's where other videos can come in handy. But here is about what you need to do for a PhD particular interview. And that's doing your homework on the research, the research group, the academic and the university. Definitely. Now, in terms of common mistakes, and this is something that can happen in any interview, but especially with PhDs, do not lie about what you know. Because examiners and supervisors and professors, they know that area more than you do, especially when in a interview. So they will pick out and they will ask you, um, so what do you mean about this? What do you mean about chromosomal abnormalities or these type of drugs or immunology or this area? So do go into detail. And then if you do, you're then setting yourself up for failure. So keep that in mind. Do not lie. Do not, do not, you're not supposed to be there. You're supposed to be the most cleverest and, and you're supposed to know the research already. No, they're not expecting you to do so. So don't set yourself up for that. And the other side is don't overly suck up to the examiner because they don't want somebody who's a teacher's pet who's, you know, I want to be your friend, etc. You have to stand your ground and respect yourself as well in the sense of, you know, I'm very honoured to get this chance. And this is why. And this is what I mean by the biggest advice I can give you is balancing those two things. You're honoured to be in a position to potentially get a PhD position, but you know that you're a good candidate as well. And that's the art of a great interview, is making sure you talk about this. And hopefully I can do a few more videos about practical application, how to do this. But in this video, I just wanted to set the scene about some quick top tips, advice, and common mistakes that we often unfortunately find in PhD interviews. A few other mistakes to keep in mind is that you want to make sure you understand the purpose of what a PhD is. A lot of people say, you know, I want to uh, cure cancer in this. And as much as we all potentially may want to or see a PhD student do so, it's very unrealistic about what a PhD is. You want to say, look, I want to develop my skills to become an independent researcher. I want to be exposed to high levels of, um, you know, research experiments and research techniques. And this PhD will allow me to do that. So you want to think about what you want and how a PhD will allow you to do something. So then the examiners, the supervisors, the professors know that, right, you understand what a PhD entails. And a lot of PhD candidates, they may be great as a candidate, but they actually don't know what PhD entails or what is realistic or what does it lead to. And that leads me on to my last common mistake is that a lot of people may not be aware of what they may or may not want to do after PhD. That can change, your mind can change, but if you're not aware of the options, a person may look at you and say, right, you excited to do a PhD, but you don't see the benefit because you don't know what you may want to do afterwards. So be aware of industry routes, be aware of academia routes, because those are really, really, really going to help you. So even if you change your mind, that's fine. If you say that, you know, one of the main reasons why I wanted to do a PhD is because I am interested, I am contemplating, or I am eager to maybe go down a route of teaching, or I want to further my career, I want to I enjoy this area so much, so I want to do research in it. So that's where a lot of people can falter because they don't have an answer to that question. And that's a very, very common mistake. So lastly, just as a little bit of a bonus to this video, my approach and my approaches if I was to ask somebody is, again, you've heard me talk a lot about this on YouTube and on Instagram. Again, if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can do. It's about being relentless about your passion, but then showing your gratitude that I'm, a, I'm very honoured and grateful for this position. And this is because I am relentless, uh, because I know this is such a, a great opportunity. This is such a, a rare opportunity and I don't want to uh, do a disservice. This is why I'm so passionate. And it's using that wording about gratitude first. And one form of practicing gratitude is by being relentless. So that's my approach if I was going to interview, especially when I did some of my postdoc interviews. You know, I did really well in those interviews because I showed this balance in that order that I'm very grateful for position at this university, position with yourselves because all the great research you do, which is why I'm relentless about all the things I've done in order to prepare me for a position as a postdoc. And the same principle applies when you're going from undergrad and master to a PhD and using that dynamic. So I hope some of that helps today. Um, I hope, again, this is a bit of a shorter video, I think, 
but I hope you find some benefit. If you do, do let me know in the comment section below. Do consider subscribing. Sub. Do consider. I can't even speak now. Do consider subscribing. I think I've said that. I've said that right. But on a serious note, do consider subscribing if you can, because uh, it would be really helpful for me and the channel. I do have a newsletter, the link is in the description down below. If you want to keep up with top tips and research advice on many different angles, whether you're doing a PhD right now, whether you're a postdoc, whether you're thinking of doing it, these top tips and tricks and advice will definitely, definitely help you. So if you want to subscribe to the newsletter, again, it's free. Comment down below. I don't spam people. It generally may be one or two emails a week maximum. So hopefully those will help you. But in any case, I shall see you in the next one. Take care.